You're listening to the Boxing Breakdown Report with resident wager talk handicapper Kevin Dolan. Get all your latest pro boxing tips at the Sports Wolf 83 on Twitter. What's happening, boxing betters? Welcome into this another edition of the Boxing Breakdown Report with me, your host Kevin Dolan. Where each and every week we'll give our thoughts on that weekend's most high profile fights and more importantly the best value bets we made in each one. So let's get into this week. Biggest fight in the card this weekend is going to be Regis Progress versus Josh Taylor in the WBSS final. This is a great format overall. I really hope it continues in the next season. Um, pits the best fighters against each other in each division. Uh, we've seen the cruiserweights last year. Uh, it's 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 been a real success and it really launched Uzik's career for instance. So... You know, both of these fighters deserve to be here. So let's talk about how they got here. In this fight, Regis Progress is coming in as the favourite for this one. Consensus seems to be about minus 160. Josh Taylor coming back at a plus 130. Taylor's the bigger of these two fighters. He's got the 2-inch height advantage along with the 2.5-inch reach advantage. Both fighters undefeated. Progress 24-0 with 20 kills. Josh Taylor 15-0 with 12 kills. In terms of resume, I definitely give Taylor... I thought he had the harder draw in terms of getting to the final the tougher side of the draw should we say Um, but even before the tournament kicked off he's fought some excellent fighters so in terms of overall resume I do give him the advantage going into this fight he beat Victor Postal, Miguel Vasquez and that's even before the tournament kicked off Uh, Progress has also had some good wins probably his biggest win pre-tournament was against Julius Ndongo decent fighter uh, who also fought Terence Crawford. Um, in terms of the draw itself, Progray has fought Terry Flanagan in the first round. Turbo Terry Flanagan, shall we say. And Kirill Relic. He's made it look pretty easy to get here, but then I think that's due to the fact that he's had the easier side. Terry Flanagan bit out of his depth going into this tournament. And Kirill Relic, he's a, he's a decent fighter, but again, he can be he can be outboxed. He's He's... A fighter that fights out of a particular structure. So he was kind of tailor-made for Progre. Uh, Josh Taylor's side of the draw I thought was a little bit tougher. First round, he beat Ryan Martin. Good fighter. Uh, and then in the semi-final, he beat Ivan Baranchek in a very good fight. Back and forth affair. Baranchek was winning early and Taylor took over late. So, you know, they, they both deserve finalists, obviously. Let's break it down how we see this fight going. Uh, On paper, I'm not going to bet in this fight. I mean, I'm not going to bet in terms of winner over under, but I do have a prop bet to give out at the end that I quite like. Uh, But in terms of the winner, I'm staying away from this one because of the intangibles. Now, on paper, I like Progre to win this fight. Uh, I think out of the two, he's actually got the more skills. Taylor fights out of a construct. He's he's got a good body attack. Like there's nothing wrong with Taylor. He's he's an excellent fighter. Um, but I think Progre is almost like Roy Jones mixed in with Pornell Whitaker in a way. Like he fights very unorthodox. It's gonna be very difficult for Taylor, who's never seen anyone like Regis Progress before, to overcome that in my opinion. Although I don't write it past him. Obviously I'm not making a bet in this fight because of the fact that, you know, Taylor has been able to adapt, he's shown his ability to adapt in previous fights and I won't put a past him to do that again progress is the faster hands of these two I do give Taylor a slight uh, advantage in terms of foot speed but the faster hands progress is the faster hands and as we said he's very unorthodox with his punch selection he has a particular jab as well that he, he'll he bend low and punch up with the jab and that catches a lot of fighters unaware who aren't expecting it now I do expect Josh Taylor and Shane McGuigan to have sat down and made a game plan regarding this. But I still think it's a bit like Manny Pacquiao. You can sit down and do game film and you know you know what to expect with that left hand. But when it actually happens during fight time in real time. I would imagine it's still going to catch out Josh Taylor at certain points during this fight. And the other thing with Progre is, is he probably has the advantage in terms of power. He has power in both hands. Now both of these fighters are southpaw. But I do give the advantage in power to Progre. He's shown to hurt opponents, especially to the body. So again, that could be a problem for Josh Taylor into this fight. 
So on paper, I actually think the odds are perfect in this one. Minus 160 plus 130. That's how I would price the fight myself. So I'm not getting involved that regard. Uh, but it's the intangible factors that put me off this fight in terms of betting. Because Taylor, Taylor's very, very, very mentally tough. He was down on the cards early against Postal. Roared back. Changed his game plan. Got back into the fight. He was down the cards early against Baranchik. Roared back. Took over the fight. He's a guy that, even though you might look at the tail of the tape in this one in terms of the two-inch height advantage, two-and-a-half-inch reach advantage, he won't use them. He he wants to exchange. He wants to get in your face, and he wants to make it a war of attrition. Now, we've seen Taylor, even though he's had the lesser of the two fights, we've had more game film of Taylor in terms of big fights. And I think that's crucial here in terms of staying away from this as a potential player. Because even though I like Pro Gray, I haven't seen him in the trenches. He's made, now this is due to his technical ability, he's made every fight up to this point look easy. Now, I don't think this Taylor fight's going to be as easy for him. So Taylor's going to be there, he's going to be in his face. And again, that's probably the best method for Taylor to win this fight. I think if Taylor stands back, looks to be cute, looks to box with a jab, like he's got a very good jab. But if he, if he tries that style, I think progress is too fast for him in terms of hand speed. I think he'll be countered. You know, he made Terry Flanagan look very, very slow. Made him look silly in parts. Now, Taylor's a lot better than Terry Flanagan. But still, I still see a similar thing happen where if Taylor tries to outbox him, I don't think it'll end well. I think Shane McGuigan should tell him to get, you know, take him into the trenches and try to, you know, get into in a slug match with him. Now, I think... That's going to lead into our prop bet for this fight. Because if it goes down that way, we see progress has the, has the slight power advantage. Um, the other intangible for this is, the at least in terms of like outside the actual boxing ability, is the fact that, look, this isn't a hometown fight for Josh Taylor. But nonetheless, especially with Ricky Burns on the undercard. Ricky Burns is the most popular fighter Scotland's ever produced. He's fighting on the undercard against Lee Selby. Bit of a Celtic clash. So even though this technically isn't a hometown fight for Josh Taylor, there'll be thousands of Scotch down from Edinburgh and Glasgow for Ricky Burns in terms of support. Every punch that Josh Taylor lands, there'll be a roar. The flags will be flying. It'll be noisy in there. Uh, And, you know, they they travel well. I actually seen Josh Taylor on a Carl Frampton undercard back in 2017. Carl Frampton Santa Cruz rematch. And even then, we've seen Scotch, some of the Scotch fans coming over with the flag. So, you know, they travel, they travel down. Definitely London will be full of them on Saturday night. It's, you know, they cheer on because Josh Taylor's one of the best fighters Scotland's produced in a in, in couple of decades, probably. So, you know, we definitely expect that to have an impact on the cards. You know, can Regis Progress win a decision? Probably, you know. I don't think it's it's completely hometown bias, but it's going to be more difficult difficult for him, let's face it. So, in terms of that, you know, I'm staying away from the actual side in this in this fight. Um, and my pick for this fight, I was doing some research and I seen Paddy Power have this listed over in Europe. Betfair have it as well. Not sure about the American markets, but you can get Josh Taylor to be knocked down at any point during the fight, plus 175. Now, I think that's a much better play than the straight-up progress by to win at minus 160. Because obviously you're getting such better odds at the plus 175. And I think for Progre to win this fight, he's going to have to knock him down once. I think if it's if it's just a war of attrition, you know, Josh Taylor, he's not the hometown fighter, but he's, he's effectively that in a way with all the travelling Scots there. So, And as well as that, even though this fight might start out uh, tentatively, I do expect that they light up. This is what makes it such a great matchup because not only is it two undefeated fighters in the final of a tournament... Uh, both of them will look to trade punches. Josh Taylor, he's made no bones of the fact he's looking to come in trading. I can't see progress not willing to indulge, knowing he's got maybe the slight power advantage in this. So I think they'll both be trading. And I do like Taylor. It could be a flash knockdown. You know, I don't see him staying down. But uh, I do see him going down maybe at some point during the fight. Look, again, this is like last week. Multiple things could happen. This is not a strong play for us. This is just a 2% lean. But I think that's a far stronger play, for instance, than the actual outright on Regis Progress, for instance. So, yeah, you can get Josh Taylor to be knocked down any point of the fight, plus 175. So, 
we'll take a bit of that. Um, there's a lot of other fights on this weekend. Just as a side note, we had a big 5% play on this card uh, when it went off. We were doing some research at the start of last month. And jo- Joe, uh, Joseph Parker was due to fight Derek Chisora on the undercard. Chief main, you know, chief main support of this card. We seen the odds when they got released. Couldn't believe it. Came out at Joseph Parker minus one seventy five. Now we're really high on Joseph Parker, so seeing that absolutely pounded it. Put you know, put a five percent play on it. Uh, emailed Johnny Detroit, and I was like, you know, make this ha- make this you know make this play happen. Put it out there. I wrote a big analysis, sent it out there. As soon as I sent it out, we're talking, by the time Johnny Detroit got back, uh, you know, the, the the play had already moved to minus 210. So obviously I wasn't alone in thinking that was a crazy price, Joseph Parker at minus 175. But I don't know if some of you heard, but there was a spider bite involved, Joseph Parker to pull out. So obviously our 5% play on this card had to go down along with it. I have no real opinion for Derek Chisora, David Price. I think they're both, <laughs> you know, the, both of these fighters aren't really going anywhere. I'm not high on Derek Chisora at all. Uh, all the Senate Gashi fight and all that. So, staying away from that. But this is a great card. Uh, we have the Stevenson Gonzalez fight over in America. And also, what should be a, a, just a cracking fight is Robert Easter, Adrian Granados. That should be just a war from start to finish. We'll be back next week with uh, Kovalev Canelo. Can't believe it's been back to back to back weeks of actual great matchups in boxing. So, We'll be back for that. And that should wrap things up for this edition of the Boxing Breakdown Report. Look forward to reading your comments as always. Some of them. <laughs> and uh, as always, you can follow me over on Twitter at the Sports Wolf 83 or over at wagertalk.com. Solana Wally, until next time. <laughs>